to the next of the series of Under the Bonnet, starting the cars up from the National Motor Museum, Bewley. My name is Doug Hill, Museum Manager and Chief Engineer. And today we have the 1903 Gordon Bennett Napier. So I hope you enjoy looking at this car and I'd also like to say thank you to everybody for all the good comments you posted about the startup of these uh, wonderful cars. There's quite a lot of work involved getting them out and bringing them back to life. We have about 80% of the collection which is uh, ready to go. And if you said to me, Doug, I want the car out and you gave me a bit of help, I'd probably uh, give you 10 to 20 cars in uh, any day and probably give me a couple of months and you'd have all 80% of them. Oh, and lots of money, <laughs> of course. But anyway, here we are, the 1903 Gordon Bennett Napier. So you hear the term, oh, Gordon Bennett. Well, Gordon Bennett was a bit like Rupert Maxwell. He's a, a newspaper entrepreneur, an American guy, and he sponsored all sorts of racing and a series of road races. Now, the thing about road racing in Great Britain in 1903 was it was not legal. So you had to go to Southern Ireland with your car to actually race on the roads. And this car went with a team of Napiers to the Gordon Bennett Trophy in Ireland in 1903. And the Napier cars, because they were going to the Emerald Isle, actually painted the cars green. And this is one of the first cars ever to be British racing green. This is where it all started. Okay, so the first car to be British racing green as well. Napier had a smaller 30 horsepower car they had this a 50 horsepower car and they had another car which was 80 to 100 horsepower which is at the dutch national motor museum mr lauman and indeed we entered these three cars in the london to brighton run and all three cars started off together now we all all had to stop outside brighton because we would have got to the finish before it opened Believe it this or not, this car, 1903, has actually been uh, on a speed gun in Southern Ireland in 2005 at 84 miles an hour. The car is quite capable of almost 90 miles an hour. There is no doubt in the days of these big racers that the engines would outperform the car. And Mr. Renault got killed in the Paris Madrid race the, the land speed record went to 100 miles an hour in 1903, but he was killed in excess of 100 miles an hour, there's absolutely no doubt. Monster engines, up to 20 litres, 24 litres, 26 litres. This one being, it's quite a small one, it's only 7.7 litre, but those 7.7 litres are actually crammed into four cylinders, when you'll see this in a bit. So Gordon Bennett Napier, Gordon Bennett got his uh, fame through his wild parties and uh, the term, oh, Gordon Bennett. I'll let you look that up. I'm not going to go into there. I'll let you look that up. It's probably on the internet somewhere. I know the story, but I'm not going to go into it. I'm going to lift the bonnet off and for you to see this wonderful engine. No mud guards race car this is a racing car and it is actually legal to run on the road i was very fortunate to um, drive this car from paris to madrid uh, in 2015 and i've got to say that some of the mileages were so high that uh, and the day mileages i actually decided to put it on a truck and one of those things was going up the labrador pass no sorry labrador pass wrong dog st bernard pass and going up it and thinking mm, with only rear wheel brakes I'm not actually going to go down it because tick over in this car is 16 miles an hour and as I say such high top end speeds there's very little engine braking so it's difficult in traffic the clutch is a leather cone it's a leather cone clutch and it's either in or out it's quite savage so here we go we open the bonnet and there we have 7.7 litres with four cylinders. Now, you may have seen in earlier films about the atmospheric 
valves. And those atmospheric inlet valves are quite inefficient, but this has atmospheric inlet valves and it has a cage for each cylinder with a cluster of four valves. It sucks in a huge amount of air. It only has any mechanism to the exhaust valves. And then you also saw about the trembler coil with the De Dion and the really high intention spark. And we also have one in this box here, but you'll see that when it's running. So 7.7, four cylinders. So that's an awful lot of air. And if you come round uh, to, to the other side of the engine, you'll see this magnificent air intake. And this is as it was originally. The carburetor is correct for the period, but we found pictures of this car because when it went to the to Ireland, it crashed in Ireland and didn't complete the race. And then in 1904, it went to the Isle of Man and it crashed before the race on Douglas Seafront. So it didn't have a very good history. You also see that um, big repair on the cylinder block here. And that's metal stitching, so there's no heat involved. So that's uh, a repair we carried out about 10 years ago. So there we have it, the, the Gordon Bennett Napier. I will show you the Napier synchronized ignition system. I'll go around the other side. And here we have the distributor. This is a high tension spark coil, the distributor and the contact breaker points there and you'll see all of that in operation so if you like to go round back around again you'll see it all working you also see the water pump here runs off of the side of the flywheel with a friction drive here a wheel okay so this takes a lot of work this is as i say a big lump of air so i hope i've got to move quite quickly when it does actually fire up. So ignition on and retarded. I've got to go around the front. I've already explained lots of times about how to hold the starting handle but this needs two hands to pull it over. Because if you put the bonnet on when it's running, it touches the spark plug. 
and you get electrocuted, so I'll come back and get that later.